hello on Friday the 19th of February and I was thinking that last year on the 19th of February I'd just be setting off now at this time for a few days in Derbyshire. It was a lovely time but I don't know when it will happen again. However, the Reverend Barbara sends her love to you all. And may the Lord be with you. Our opening prayer. Lord, you give us life. You give us love. You give us yourself. Help us to give our lives, our love and ourselves to you and to others. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Today's readings are from Isaiah chapter 58, verses 1 to 9a, and Matthew chapter 9, verses 14 and 15. Earlier this week, I chatted to various people about their favourite pancake toppings. The runaway winner was the classic lemon and sugar. And that's also my favourite topping, although this year I decided to go with a savoury topping option for a change. I must say I spent some time musing about this choice, which then made me wonder how much time we do spend thinking about food. Thinking about what we fancy eating, how we want to make it, and hopefully the satisfaction which we have following an enjoyable meal. Which is rather a bizarre thing to be thinking about so near to the start of Lent, when on Ash Wednesday I spent some time talking about the fact that fasting plays a role as a spiritual discipline. How fasting helps us to focus away from food and instead to spend that time focusing more on God. And it led my thoughts to think again about something which happened at university because each Friday lunchtime we had a prayer youth meeting at the Christian Union. There was the option not to take lunch and instead you made an arrangement where the money which would have been spent on that lunch was saved and given to a good cause. Quite often people who didn't have enough food to eat somewhere else in the world. The thing about this which really sticks in my mind relates to one of the main leaders of that prayer meeting. It wasn't myself. This young man led by example and cancelled his lunch. But then his girlfriend gave her lunch to him possibly an example of true love. So how does this fit into the concept of a true fast? If we think what was happening, time was spent in prayer and with God. Money was given to support people in need, but food was eaten. In the reading from Isaiah, we hear about perhaps what is the opposite situation. The people are abstaining from eating food, but God questions whether it is, in fact, a true fast. That's because the action of not eating isn't leading to a deeper spiritual focus and relationship with God. Their day-to-day -day actions are still very self-orientated and they are not reflecting 
godly values. They are still taking advantage of other people and exploiting them for their own benefits. They aren't drawing closer to God in any way. And it seems that their fasting is all to do with outward appearance. Which led me to wonder, which of those two situations which I have outlined do you think was a closer one to a true fast? I'll let you think about that. And we now come to our next prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for those people who have the courage to look beyond themselves and to think of others, often people who they have never met. Help us to continue to follow your example of showing concern and meeting the needs of others as we give ourselves to you. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. For today's prayer points, let's pray for the farmers who are now worried about the impact of the recent very wet and extremely cold weather. Let's pray for the lonely and the vulnerable. And let's pray and give thanks for the work of all food banks and similar organisations. We now come to the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And our blessing for today. The Lord open your eyes to his promise, surround you with his great love, and fill your days with his presence. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and your loved ones today and always. Amen.